We aren't getting back into this thing. I find my voice and say to my pilot as the three of us stare at the softball-sized hole in our windscreen. The unseen damage is all I am thinking about. What else can we not see? Standing outside my base, watering flowers on the most perfect of days, I thought, I can't believe I get paid to do this. We were an experienced crew that worked very well together. We were on scene for a very short time. We return to the running aircraft to load our patient, and we see our pilot has been talking to operational control. The EMS crew had also asked us if we could make it to the trauma center. My partner asked our pilot if we were okay, and he said, good to go. We have been called to a scene on the interstate. Multiple aircraft were requested by ground crews. We were able to launch from our base quickly. Just miles away, a family had been hit by an 18-wheeler. They needed us. En route, our pilot tells us we need to be efficient on scene. There are storms moving into our destination later. At this very moment, three other aircraft were declining the same flight for weather. We didn't know. We would be taking the driver of the semi to a much needed level one trauma center. In flight, our patient wouldn't stop talking. It was his first time in the air. What did it look like out there? Could he sit up to look? He was a good guy. He just wouldn't stop. How are the people he'd hit? I really wanted to be honest with him, and I tell him. You hit a family, and the car burnt on impact. The mother and the toddler didn't make it. Then he was quiet. The sound of our radio catches my attention. I hear our operational control trying to get a hold of us again. At the same time, air traffic control talks to some jumbo jets on the runway at the international airport. Four jets stacked up to depart, and they are refusing? Our pilot says, stand by, in the radio to our dispatch and I hear air traffic control tell us we are approaching 100% hail probability and high winds. I look out my window. Then the blinding rain began. My partner and I start suggesting that landing now would be a good idea. We desperately need to be out of this situation. We say several times in different ways that we need to land now. I'm thinking I wouldn't even drive my car in this rain. Our pilot tells us that we are going to make it, that we are on final approach. We fall completely silent. We are still five miles out. This is the longest approach of our lives. My partner reaches out and takes my hand. We discuss days later how in our silence we thought of our families. We thought of the devastation this would cause to the loved ones we'd promised to come home to. We knew that this was it. Somehow, we managed to land on top of the hospital that day. In the time it took our elevator to reach the ER, a golf ball-sized hailstorm had begun. I didn't realize it then, but that was my changing day. I'm looking at that snow. It's directly north of you, and it um, it's got a, it's going southeast. It it goes right over the city, and showing like it will be there in less than 30 minutes. The center of that cell, which is extreme, it's you know it's the pink, the, the extreme precipitation. It's also got 100% hail in it, two and a half inch hail, and it's moving at 49 miles an hour. If you were pulling pitch now, I'm not sure that you'd beat it in front of it oh, keep a south option in mind if, if it gets you know gets that close so all right brother i'll be safe <laughs>